Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk on your favorite channel, Huda TV. I'm your host, Arkham Rashid. There are two types of cleanliness in Islam. The first is, the, is a spiritual cleanliness, the cleanliness of the soul. And the second is a physical cleanliness, the cleanliness of your body, your clothes, your environment. On tonight's episode, we want to focus on, on the importance of good hygiene and its relation to our religion and its relation to our physical health. So I'm going to start off as usual by letting my guests introduce themselves and then we'll begin our conversation. Uh, if I could start with my right, uh, brother, if you can give us your name, uh, where you're from, and just a little bit about yourself. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm Nazif Abu Bakr by name, Nigerian by nationality. Mm -hmm. I'm here in Cairo to study at Al Azhar University, specifically languages and translation. All right, and yeah. how are you finding Egypt so far? Okay, as you know, Egypt, every, everything is going according to plan so far. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Like well, uh, Nazif, I want to welcome you to the mm -hmm. show. Thank you and this much. is not your first time here with me. Yeah. You've been here before, so yeah, I want to welcome yeah. you again uh, okay, back to the show. Uh, brother, if you can give me your name, where you're from, uh, what you're doing here in Egypt, and just a little bit about yourself. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Ali Omar Al Ghazali, mm -hmm. and I'm a 20 year old Egyptian. Uh, I'm a, and also, I study uh, language and translation at Al Azhar University. Uh, and what are you doing here in Egypt? No, I'm just kidding. I know you're Egyptian. <laughs> uh, okay, brother, I want to welcome you back to the show because you were uh, on the show here with me uh, before. Uh, if I can go to this side. Uh, brother, if I can get your name, where you're from, and just a little bit about yourself. Go ahead. Yes, uh, my name is Hassan. I'm uh, from the United States of America. Uh, I was born in New York City. And I'm here in Egypt currently uh, learning the language of Arabic alongside a handful of uh, other studies. All right, and yeah. I want to welcome you back to the show also because you were here before. Uh, so Thank welcome you. back. Uh, brother, if I can get your name, uh, where you're from, and just a little bit about yourself. Okay. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, I'm Abdullah Aytiwali. I come from Brazil. From Brazil? Yeah, okay. you know, I'm a, I would say I'm a new Muslim because I've been Muslim, revert to Islam from seven years now, eight years now. Okay. And um, I, I'm, quite, I'm quite fresh here in Egypt because I just came here three, three months ago. Yeah. And I've been studying before the university about about photography and anthropology, but now I'm I'm getting touch to know more about Islam, and so the purpose I'm here is to learn Arabic language and Quran. So I've been here for this. Okay, if you don't mind, I want to ask you. Uh, tell us a little bit of, uh, about Brazil. How are the Muslims in Brazil? Uh, um, you know, what's the population of Muslims in Brazil? Tell us a little bit about it. Is interesting subject because most of people they don't know about Islam in Brazil mm -hmm. even our brother he would say that <laughs> people don't know even the Islam in America mm. so uh, the, the Islam in, in Brazil uh, is not that much of people but I would say that is not for is quite quite old in Brazil because the history of Islam in Brazil and in, in the whole Americas is quite old but people don't know this that it at least 400 years it's been there for a while, yeah. but are Muslims a small minority there? Or? It's a very small minority. Very small I think minority. it's even the government. They we we have we have no much information, sure information about this. But maybe it's about one million. But and, uh, and how about uh, mosques and uh, every nowadays every every capital every capital there's one mosque at least, at least. in in Sao Paulo, the place I come from, uh, we have at least ten or. or 15 mosques and musallas so even the place I live there I used to live there is not far I can go to the mosque I, <laughs> I attend in mosque I praise in mosque yeah. and so but Would now is mm -hmm. increasing the number of the Brazilians reverted and the increase in the numbers of the mosques that they are building now mm -hmm. and also there is one I would say the a wave of immigrants they coming from uh, many many countries especially from 
pro-Arabic countries and African countries, so they also they are uh, increasing the number of Islam and, and, uh, and, and Muslims. Uh, would you say there's more uh, immigrant Muslims in Brazil or uh, more converts in Brazil amongst the Muslims? Would you say? Uh, that's that's a, that's the question because. I think we should. I think I, I would like we should uh, have the the proper numbers of this, but traditionally we have a, a community, a Lebanese community and Syrian community. But nowadays I I, I, I I feel myself that the Brazilians they are more and more interesting to 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 be in Islam, also because they are discovering that maybe they they are roots, they are background, no matter they come from Arabic countries. It's it's located in, in, in Muslim culture because some some of them they came from uh, Afro-Brazilian roots and also the Iberian roots. We know that Andalus has for what 800 years has been a place of Islam, Dar al Islam. So many Brazilians they realize this and they realize how how Islam is beautiful and peaceful. So now I see I watch people more and more people get into the Islam. Even Brazilians they. Yeah. Uh, thank you. That was some uh, so quite interesting do. information about Brazil there. Okay, uh, before I start my conversation with you guys, I want you guys to quickly take a look at a short video clip. So go ahead. How perfect my is and I praise In Spain, during the heyday of Islam, when the real science was being brought there a thousand years ago, when people were really thinking, reflecting, and teaching, and they were into astronomy, geology, hydrology, and understanding how the water cycles work, many of the great sciences and disciplines were being developed at that time. And people traveled from all over the world, from Europe especially, to come and to be educated here. But at that time, it was called the Dark Ages. And there was the Black Plague. And the people were suffering and dying en masse all through Europe. But this was not happening amongst the Muslims. The Muslims were free from that. And even when the Europeans came and brought their plague with them, they would even die. But the Muslims didn't catch it. It didn't spread. Now today, they can explain it to you real easy. They, well, that's pretty simple. The Muslims were washing themselves at least five times a day. They were cleaning themselves the way a surgeon does today. They ate with their right, not with the left. So they didn't pick up this infectious diseases. And when they eliminated, they had a certain place and a way, and they washed everything away with water, just as we use the modern day toilets, washing it away. All of this was 1,400 years ago. That's where it started. A thousand years ago, we see what happened in Spain. And none of them ever got it. In fact, they showed the people of Europe what to do to cure their problem. Welcome back to Let's Talk. I hope you guys enjoyed that short clip by Yusuf Estes. Uh, so now if I can start with you, Brother Nadif, if you can share some of your thoughts on that video. Go ahead. Okay, as you can see there, Muslims, mashallah, since day one, have extreme high standards of cleanliness and personal hygiene. We can see many years back, Muslims, mashallah, are very careful about what they eat and what they drink, and even they taught <coughs> European how to maintain their environment. But now the reverse is the case. If you can look into Muslim environment, unfortunately, dot and other impurity have become the science of our environment. We are in dying need to go back to our pure teaching of Islam. We can see some of the first verses revealed to our honorable Prophet Sallallahu uh, Your garment, keep it clean. And also any impurity, leave it alone. So stay away from any impurity. You see, even before mentioning the Tawheed, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has uh, started mentioning about cleanliness. You see the importance of cleanliness. Yes. So every Muslim, whatever, regardless 
in his environment, he has to pay he has to pay close attention to the environmental issue. They are very important, and it is part and science of Islam. All right. Uh, thank, you. thank you for your thoughts on that video. Uh, Ali, if you can share some of your thoughts on that video, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting video, and that type of video is when I watch. It uh, makes me more certain that Islam is the true religion. It shows me how practical Islam is, and I feel more proud to be Muslim. But at the same time, it really saddens me when I compare the golden ages of Islam to the state of the Ummah uh, today. The moment, mm. And I think the state of the Ummah today and the, the state we are in now is due to people and Muslims overlooking and neglecting s aspects of the religion uh, or belittling some issues in Islam which, is, should, which should not be belittled because it, it is a part of Islam. You know, most Muslims nowadays they care about, you know, uh, spiritual uh, the spiritual a aspect of Islam and they neglect you know the physical cleanliness and I don't think it's due to a lack of education but it's, it's sad it's, I think it's a lack of application Muslims are not applying Islam correctly you know it's in m many, many of the Muslim countries unfortunately alright uh, thank you for your thoughts on that uh, go ahead brother Hassan if you can share um, some of your thoughts yes in summary I think uh, the brother in the video is going to say clear cut reason as to why uh, cleanliness is a, such an important factor in Islam. Um, uh, as you can see, uh, nowadays in society, uh, people tend to neglect uh, the basic act of cleanliness. And I find that quite surprising. When uh, 1400 years ago, uh, this, is a, this is a time in which it's considered medieval times, and uh, they were practicing this basic level of cleanliness in such a manner that it was actually the solution to such a deadly plague that uh, killed countless of mm. people. So uh, I find that f very, very incredible, and I encourage uh, us as Muslims to uh, follow uh, behind the, uh, you know, the, uh, the our forefathers, and inshallah, uh, come a better um, Right. All right. So thank you for your thoughts on that, yeah. uh, brother. Go ahead if you can share your thoughts. Uh, for me, it's nice to talk about this because I remember when I embraced Islam, the cleanliness, uh, uh, the importance of cleanliness was very remarkable. So I could, I could find one religion that giving advice even for, the ba like as brothers say, the practical life. Mm. Because having Christian ba background, I thought the religion was something only for the spiritual. Yeah, when so you're in church, not on your... Okay, mm. when, you go, when you go Sunday yeah. time. But when I got to know Islam, and it was very important to understand how big Islam and how, how important and how truly is this religion because the as brother says uh, the spiritual life it goes out together with the practical life the everyday life so going further even if you when you practice a lot and uh, you know that for the the purification of body is the first stuff first step of salah it's yep. the salat is coming after that so in a way, we would say it's it's a kind of of, of uh, ibadah as well. It's, it's the beginning of worship when you clean yourself. Mm. So I think that we, we we are here reminding each other that, as brother says, to don't let the practical life and the practical teachings of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam backward. Because it comes all together, a spiritual life and, and uh, physical life, we cannot split that. Mm. Uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts. I, I really like how you know all four of you guys had a different perspective on the you know short video clip. It was really you know interesting. Uh, so, brother Ali, you mentioned that uh, most of the times people overlook uh, physical cleanliness and focus more on the spiritual side of Islam. Uh, you know, I want to ask you. What is the importance of cleanliness in Islam? Well, it is of extreme uh, importance in Islam. And, uh, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, uh, was authentic hadith, uh, on Abi Malik al-Ash'ari, and the Rasulullah ﷺ, قال, الطهور شطر الإيمان. The Prophet ﷺ said that cleanliness or purity is half the religion or half the Iman, half the faith of a Muslim. And uh, this hadith shows us how important Islam is, and we should not be, you know, it's not an, a minor issue. That it's an issue that you know concerns all Muslims, 
and the tahur, the word tahur in the in the hadith, uh, means mean, meaning cleanliness, refers to both physical and spiritual uh, cleanliness, obviously. And you know, if if you look at the the, the the beginning of Islam, as the Prophet he said, when the Prophet received the the, the the revelation from Allah, one of the earliest ayat that was revealed was Surah Al Mudathir. Uh, so Allah commanded and taught the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to clean his garment, to clean his clothes at the very beginning of his da'wah. And also nowadays when anyone converts or reverts to Islam, the first thing that we, we advise him to do or we tell him to do is to take a shower, take, take a ghusl. Yeah, I think that, that, that is it. Mm. Uh, what do you think, uh, Brother Nadif? Okay, in, ad in addition to that, also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Khamsun min al fitrah and he mm -hmm. mentioned five things that he say they are incompatible you know, with the law of the nature. Mm -hmm. Among them was cutting your nails, both finger and toenails, fingernail and toenails, and also removing pubic hair, and also a a any impurity in your body, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded us to remove it. But unfortunately now, I that's true. You can see some people growing their nails like animals, you know, and some went to the extra mile and painted them red. Just the yeah. resemble animal, for example. This is again the nature. So, by the way, this also, for example, if we put something red, the, those substances can prevent water from reaching your nail. So yeah. this also, your wudu is not accepted. So, as we can see, Muslim is very killing. It's very killing. You have to stay killing. And it has been, it has been proved by doctors around the world that removing pubic hair also prevent you or is like an immune from some other serious disease that catch you. So we have to be very conscious about our physical, not only spiritual or mental cleanliness, also our physical cleanliness. This is a sign of good Muslim, but some Muslim nowadays, they don't think it's yeah, part of example, it. For example, if you go to the mosque, unfortunately, yeah. You will see everybody coming to the mosque. For example, just as an example, like an engineer or a mechanic, just he come with his in his shabby clothes. For example, you are meeting your lot. Uh, yeah. in, in the Quran, it says, "Khudzina takum in the kulli masjid." Huna in the kulli masjid is not when you are going to the mosque. Even in the privacy of your own home, you have to dress in your good clothes. When you are meeting your Lord, just imagine when you, are, you have a meeting, you are meeting just a human being like you, like yourself. He goes to the toilet just like yourself, but you spend a lot of time in front of the mirror looking at yourself like that. But this is your Lord. You have to clean your body physically, spiritually, and mentally. Mm, that's a very good example. I know. <laughs> Uh, usually when people go to a meeting or when they're going to meet their yeah. boss or co-workers, you know, they dress up nicely, uh, you know, put on some nice cologne, make sure, you know, their uh, tie is straight, you know, fix themselves up before yeah. the mirror and then go meet this person. But whenever we go to prayer, you know, whatever we're wearing, khalas, we just walk in there and pray, whether we just came from work and we're all, you know, dirty, doesn't, you know, a lot of us don't take this into uh, consideration. Uh, if I can go over here, Brother Hassan, you know, yes. um, if you can share some of the importance of oh, cleanliness in Islam. Okay. Definitely, uh, as we all know, uh, cleanliness is without an inkling of a doubt is uh, greatly important in Islam. Um, uh, let's just take your five daily prayers, for example. Uh, in the beginning, uh, you must cleanse yourself, uh, yeah. put yourself in a state of purity by uh, making your ablutions. And uh, the ablutions is actually considered half of a bath. So if you look at it, uh, a Muslim that, uh, is that uh, makes his five daily prayers is essentially having five half baths uh, every single day. So does that count as two uh, and a <laughs> half? Two <laughs> and a half uh, well, I wouldn't go as far as to say that. Yeah. Uh, however, in fact, uh, in the beginnings of Islam, uh, the Muslims would take a custom to bathing every single day before the dawn prayers, like before Fajr. Mm. And this was a custom that the, the Muslims would take a habit of doing this. So uh, I think uh, cleanliness is much more than uh, most people perceive it to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, we should, uh, uh, you know, include it within in our natures for uh, Islam is a religion of nature. Mm. I like that uh, fact you pointed out that 
uh, Muslims used to bathe before Fajr. Before and, you know, nowadays it's so hard to wake up for Fajr. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it's, uh, it's quite profound. Uh, brother, if you can share your thoughts on the importance of cleanliness in Islam. I, I, I would say like for common, common sense, everybody, when, when you got shower, yeah. how, d how do you feel after that? I think for people that belong to any religion, when you got shower, you come back home for the day working, you come and have a shower, you feel fine. And uh, how would you think that it would be this experience, like he says, if you, when you the hot day, you go, you make ablution, and that is relief. You, I, I remember there's one small, small hadith that says that, it's nar narrated by Abu Huraira, who says that, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he yes. says that there's a person that lives by the, by the river, in front of the river. So if he, this person, he, 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 he takes bath, he cleans himself five times a day, it would be remain any dirt in his body. Mm. So the, the Sahaba, they said no. No, they wouldn't. And they say well, so it's the same experience you have the five, the five daily prayers, if you pray, pray five times. So uh, even if we, ha we, have, we, we would say, we have to say Alhamdulillah because we have discovered that. That the cleanliness of body, it's coming out together, the clean, cleanliness of soul. Mm. But as all the brothers, uh, they, they have remembered, it's a lo it's nowadays lot, uh, it's, a lot of wo uh, it's a lot of work. We have to work a lot to, to have it again. Mm. Uh, inshallah, you know, uh, people realize that uh, the importance of you know, physical cleanliness uh, alongside uh, spiritual cleanliness mm. and you know, start taking these things into consideration. Uh, Brother Ali, if I can go to you and ask you, you know, in what ways does Islam encourage cleanliness or good hygiene? Uh, okay, first of all, I wanted to you know, highlight the point that if, if someone was to study Islam, mm -hmm. now I want to study Islam, I pick up any book. Let's, let's, let's say, for example, I pick up a book of fiqh. When I open the book, the first chapter is a tahara yeah. All fiqh books. That it teaches you that you have to clean yourself First, before you start worshiping Allah, mm. this is the beginning uh, stage. Not just that. If I pick up a, a book of Hadith, for example, the Forty Nawawi Hadith, the first Hadith talks about niyyah, which is also an aspect of tahara, the spiritual tahara, tahara of qalb. That before you study, you have to clean your heart from 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 a shirk, uh, from associating any anyone with Allah. Yes, yeah. So yeah. it is very important for us, uh, and Islam encourages encourage, the Prophet ﷺ encourages. Yes. Encourages us in many a hadith to clean ourselves. Uh, one of them uh, is the one that I mentioned, at tahuru shatru al iman Also, uh, you know, the, the, the Prophet said that, uh, that it is Allah's right on every Muslim that he at least showers once every seven days. And mm -hmm. this is authentic hadith. That means if you don't shower for more than seven days, uh, you are violating Allah's right. So this is a very important issue, and also as mentioned in another hadith, that uh, you know, hadith, a famous hadith, غُسْلُ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ وَاجِبٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُحْتَلِمٍ. The shower of Yawm al-Jum'ah, or Friday, is an obligation on every, you know, Muslim. So there's many a hadith, you know, if you look into the Sunnah of the Prophet Okay, uh, I want to ask you, Nadif, do you think uh, living clean and staying clean, having a good hygiene, has a connection with uh, being healthy? Absolutely, How because that? well, that's why in his hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he put a lot of emphasis on cleanliness. For example, here, if you dunk out your fingernails and they grow, the dirt that remain here can affect you badly and the people around you. That's why even Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala he said, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin wa yuhibbu mutatahirin. So, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your creator who creates you, he know what is good for you. That's why in many ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a lot of emphasis also in purification, on purification. He said, yuhibbu mutatahirin uh, here. For example, if you want to get closer to Allah, just take clean and leave alone all the impurity as we know, the diseases that affect a lot of people has a connection indirectly or directly 
with impurity. With impurity. This is a global yeah. fact. No one can ignore it. Yeah. Thank you for your thoughts on that. Uh, Brother Hassan, if you yeah. can share some thoughts on the connection between uh, you know, physical cleanliness mm. and uh, living healthy. Hmm. Well, uh, I think uh, definitely one who's dedicated uh, a portion of their time and effort to uh, living a healthy lifestyle uh, is uh, definitely likely to uh, dedicate a portion of their time and effort to um, uh, good hygiene and uh, and. Uh, and, and with that being said, uh, I just want to highlight a few uh, uh, a few conditions of uh, bad personal hygiene, for example. And uh, for uh, you have the physical aspect, and you have a, a psychological aspect as well as a social aspect of uh, bad, bad personal hygiene, which is a direct relation, which is in connection with uh, living a healthy lifestyle. Now, uh, the, the physical aspect of it is it can lead to illness, it can lead to disease uh, that, that can uh, destroy the body and, and uh, cause much harm to the, the, the human being. And, uh, the, the social aspect of it, which is really understated, is uh, that it affects, is it affects your appearance as well as uh, odors, uh, what some would say, uh, you know, emitting foul odors can uh, mm -hmm. definitely affect your uh, overall uh, status. And uh, in your in your life, but um, in terms of living a healthy healthy lifestyle, you definitely have to uh, keep, keep up with your maintain hygiene. your personal hygiene to the the highest possible uh, manner, and uh, you, def you definitely th those two couple basically, and uh, that's the basically the way you go about living. All right, uh, thanks for your thoughts on that, Thank brother. You. I want to ask you also the connection between. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, living a healthy life, uh, a healthy lifestyle, and uh, staying clean. But before we do that, uh, we're going to quickly go for a short break. So stay tuned. Now, people who have their own personal vendetta would come and say, Ah, Wahhabi Sheikh, super Salafi or Salafi or whatever. Why? They try to label us so that they would think that they would gain more and more followers where they can eat from them when they give them the money. Ask Islam, should we perform wudu after eating mutton meat, after eating sheep meat? And the Prophet said, Islam, if you wish, it's not a must. And then he asked him again, he said, okay, do we have to perform wudu after eating camel's meat? And the Prophet said, yes. You're not giving it to him because he has black eyes or blue eyes. You're giving it to him because of his position. And that is why you're giving it to this particular department's head rather than giving it to the HR GM, for example. Nobody gives the, uh, the HR GM anything because they don't want anything from him until they want a job. Therefore, this is the way you can judge whether it's a bribe or not. We go out of our way to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet to teach it to the people, to implement it in our lives, in our families, in our neighbors. We love the Prophet but when it comes to what he has himself said, that his father and his mother are in hell, what do you want me to do? Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Huda TV's social media sites are the best way to contact us from anywhere around the world. Stay connected with Huda TV's latest news and programs through Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. It's fast and easy. Stay up to date with your favorite shows and scholars today. Huda TV, a light in every home. Allah, 
Welcome back to Let's Talk. Now, before the break, uh, Brother Abdullah was going to share his thoughts on uh, the connection between good hygiene and good health. So go ahead, Brother Abdullah. Uh, we, we were talking about the connection, and we see that indeed if you go to the hospital, how it should be the environment of hospital? It has to be clean. Yeah. Why? Because if he, he the cleanliness, it avoids sickness. So not only the hospital but our own body has has to follow the same example like you say like even the the cleaning the private the private parts so that we know that some some countries they're not islamic countries the people the some people they have they have uh, some problems with this because it it could cause sickness and disease for instance even that's why we, we are talking about this and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had not talk things by accident, so even the circumcision. So the doctors, they, they, they proved that, that it avoids, ne, the cleanliness avoids some, some sickness, diseases. diseases. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you for your thoughts on that. Now I want to go over here. You know, we, we spoke from the beginning of the show until now about uh, physical, you know, uh, cleanliness but mainly pertaining to one's body, so like taking showers, clothes. Uh, let's jump into uh, environment. Uh, you know, sh uh, can you guys share some of your thoughts on you know, uh, the importance of uh, a clean environment? Yes. Go ahead. Okay, I just want to mention a very beautiful hadith, uh, one of my favorite personally. The Prophet Sallallahu said oh, in the authentic hadith, عُرِضَتْ عَلَيَّ أَعْمَالُ أُمَّتِي حسنها وسيئها فوجدت من أحسنها أو من محاسنها إماطة الأذى عن الطريق أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم The meaning is The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that, that deeds of my ummah were shown before my face I, I, I seen all the deeds mm -hmm. of my ummah the good and the bad and one of the best deeds or one of the good deeds that I saw was just removing any harmful thing or removing dirt from the pathway and also, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in another hadith that removing the pathway, uh, removing any harm from the pathway is a form of sadaqah, a form of charity. And uh, on a third hadith also, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that a man was walking down the street and he saw like uh, a branch of a tree with thorns. So he just removed it off of the street. And because of that single deed, Allah forgave him. So this is how important that we should clean uh, the environment around us and, you know, the pathways and our homes and everything around us. But you see, if that's an Islamic principle, then, you know, why do we constantly see the exact opposite happening in many Muslim countries, whereas you see somebody, uh, you know, instead of removing things from the street, uh, he'll be eating, you know, chips, for example, and, you know, chuck the bag right out the window of his car uh, while he's driving. And, you know, you constantly see so much trash and dirt uh, in many Muslim countries? Well, I think that the, the problem starts in the household and the, the way the parents, you know, raise their kids. Uh, I think that we should, you know, raise and bring up our children on a, uh, in a way that we, we, we encourage them to be clean and we teach them about this hadith of the import, importance of a, you know, a clean environment around us. You know, also teach them to use uh, the miswak from the, the, the siwak from an early, or the, at least the brush, you know, toothbrush from an early age. And this is also one thing that a lot of Muslims neglect. Mm. So it know. starts in the house. Yeah, right? it starts in the house, I think. All right, uh, brother Nadif, if you can share some of your thoughts on in, uh, on the importance of a good and clean environment. Okay, first of all, when we look into the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa idha qala rabbuka lil malaika inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa." I remember when your Lord said to the angels, I'm going to put a deputy on earth. This deputy was a man like me and you, like you and me here. Mm -hmm. So as a deputy, you have to look over your environment because I draw responsibility has been placed on our shoulders. So Allah has prepared us on all the creation, uh, on all the, what he creates. So that's why every one of us has the responsibility to take care of his environment. At least, if you don't kill in your environment, so don't make it dirty. Don't, don't make, make it, it dirty. dirty. Yeah. 
So there's also another hadith. There was an old woman, an old woman, an old black woman joined the Prophet ﷺ. She used to sweep the Prophet's mosque. And one day, Prophet ﷺ missed her and asked the Sahaba, where is she? And she said, oh, Messenger of Allah, she died one day. She died a couple of days ago. So why you didn't inform me of her death? I said, wow, you are a slave and we didn't want to disturb you. I said, no, show me or take me to her grave. And he went there and prayed on her. Because Sahaba, عليهم, they believed what she did or what she used to do, but it was a great thing in the eye of Allah. So, for example, when you are coming to the mosque, please, if you know you are not killing, yeah, just take an honest look at yourself. For example, smell yourself. Mm -hmm. If there is a bad odor coming from you, because okay, if I'm you go to I'm the just going to have you hold your thought there just for okay. a second. We have a phone call. Uh, Brother Suleiman from Kenya. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Arqaz, how are you guys today? I'm good. How about yourself? How are you? I'm very, I'm good. I'm really good. Okay, I'm, I, I'm I want to start off by, today. I want to start off by thanking you for joining our conversation today. Yeah, thank you too. Yeah. Okay, go yeah, ahead. I really like I, I, you guys talking about cleanliness, about nazafa, right? Yeah. Yeah, first of all, you know, like, as we know, cleanliness is a, uh, it's uh, being clean is one of the most important things. You know, like, uh, I can give you guys, like, example, if, like, someone, like, uh, especially, like, a student or some, or everyone, you know, if, if, like, your heart is not, sometimes if you're not happy or you come home and you miss your home, like, everything is, like, another place, you, you, you close it and, uh, she is, or is not like organized. Sometimes to even in that one too can can how to say can make your heart tight. But if like everything is uh, organized, if you come to outside or someone, even if you feel you are not feeling alright or you feel in uh, hunger, you may that one only may help you, you know, to make your heart clean and to do maybe if you didn't even prayer like uh, astro or some like uh, prayer fasting. If you come, you, you may do that one. Quickly, but if you just come outside, like with uh, you come, you meet your home is not clean. That's made to aid you some another job to do, but because being clean is gonna help you, you know, more. Mm. As you know, there's uh, even in some another hadith talk about another particular iman, but some people say that like the hadith is not true, but it's my help, you know, it's because that's what is gonna help you increase your iman or to worship God in, in a good way and uh, to, to aid your iman too. All right. Uh, thank you for sharing that, you know, uh, your thought there with us. Uh, I want to uh, once again thank you for calling uh, and joining our conversation yeah, okay. here tonight. Thank you, thank you. Right. And I thank the brothers, uh, Nadif. I think we have some brothers over there, maybe Abdullah too, and the rest. Yeah. Thank you, all of you. All right. Thank you once again. Uh, okay, Brother Nadif, so uh, okay. I just wanted you yeah, to continue. Yeah, I was saying again. that black lady was doing something very good in her, uh, to, to her community and as a result of that maybe Allah repented all her sin so for example here but we here we are not asking you to clean the mosque yeah if you can do just come up and take a vacuum and clean the mosque but we are not asking you for example just keep the toilet after using it clean but unfortunately some people after using the toilet no one can go inside the toilet to use it again. No, they pollute it and so, or they don't even rub their shoes before entering the mosque. So they are contributing to the dirty, to the dirtiness of the mosque. At least if you don't serve your community, don't harm it. Mm. Yeah, That's a very good point you problem. mentioned. I, li I like it. Uh, you know, if you're not going to clean it, yeah. The least you can do is don't, you know, make, uh, yeah, don't make it dirty. Yeah. 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 All right. So, uh, are you, you want to continue? Uh, uh, Brother Hassan, if you can share your thoughts on uh, the importance of a good and clean environment, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, I'd uh, like to begin by uh, stating a few solutions uh, you can take towards uh, bettering the cleanliness of your environment as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, uh, basically, you look towards the uh, developing nations. Uh, you'd find that many of the developing nations, uh, they attained a, a level of cleanliness that is shared uh, throughout. 
the nation. Um, uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, name a personal account of mine uh, uh, through my travels to Turkey, for example. Uh, I found it to be so very clean, but at the same time, it did not diminish the Islamic influence uh, that I felt throughout my stay in Turkey. And I found that really, really pleasing. I, uh, I found myself wanting that to be the exact same case throughout the Arab world, for example, or the all the music Muslim countries. Uh, if you look to the West, uh, for example, uh, a good way of uh, uh, like like enforcing cl cleanliness is uh, through uh, uh, a law enforcement. Like you have the in the West, you have uh, officials that are there specifically to find those who litter. Uh, they're they're there to take care of the sanitation. So uh, looking towards these developed nations, uh, you can find a, a plethora of solutions to the current environmental problem that we face. Uh, but most, for the most part, uh, I think uh, it's, it's an ethical um, uh, issue. Mm -hmm that uh, that uh, there needs to be awareness brought about uh, in, in terms of how the importance of uh of cleanliness in islam mm -hmm. um uh, okay, i'm gonna have you hold your yeah. thought there just for sure. a second uh we have a phone call from brother ishaq assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam uh yes how are you brother wa alaikum salam dear assalamu alaikum uh can you hear me my only my my only advice for the Muslim youth is we have to be very patient and obey the rule of Allah and do what Islam teaches and avoid everything which is not good and convert another people into the Islam. That is my advice for the all Muslim youth in the world. All right, uh, bro uh, Brother Ishaq, first I want to thank you for calling in tonight and joining our conversation. Uh, secondly, thank I want to thank you, you for sharing that advice with the viewers and with us here in the studio. So thank you very much. Brother Ishaq? Okay, I think you cut off. Uh, okay, so as you were saying, uh, yes, uh, the I'd like to, uh, there are two other aspects I'd like to mention of our uh, environmental cleanliness. And it begins from a, a national level and uh, also a local level. Uh, as I said before, in, in Western countries, uh, on the national level. So you're, uh, you're right now you're telling us ways we can tackle. Uh, yeah, basically. Know, the dirty environments. Yeah, mm -hmm. ways of tackling, uh, uh, you know, the uh, cl the cleanliness issue as a whole in our environment. So as I was saying, on a national level, you would implement the legislation, uh, rules, and regulations that are uh, that prevent people from. Uh, um, uh, littering and uh, so on, so on and so. But then you have the local level, a uh, more grassroots level mm -hmm. of approaching it, which will require a bit of self-sacrifice, uh, or maybe volunteering in your community and uh, um, uh, you know uh, cleaning the litter that is also uh, uh, apparent right, right, right. there. Yeah, but um, I think um, you, if you do possess uh, clean habits within your home. It should not remain in your home. You should not leave it at the front door or and uh, and just leave. Uh, it, it actually requires quite a bit of effort to uh, you know accumulate garbage and then throw it out into the street. Uh, you actually have to put a little action into doing that. So rather than putting it into littering, put it into a, a different uh, a different area which will uh, benefit the environment. That's all. All right. Uh, thank you for your thoughts on that, okay. uh, brother. If you can share some of your thoughts on the importance of a clean environment, go ahead. So nowadays, when we talk about the environment, I think it's a big issue. And everybody is talking about this because now we are facing this problem. All the big cities are facing this problem. All yeah. countries are facing this problem. Especially with pollution and... The pollution. Yeah. But it is that's, in, that's nice to see that even the mass of Islam has been foreseen some, some aspects. When we remember the uh, Professor Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had told that not for the call of nature, not don't make the call of nature in the, how to say, the, 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 the water, there's not running water. What do yeah. you say that? The uh, still, still water. Still water. Still water. So they say the, the, same, the, same, the same problem in some cities where they have rivers and they throw the, the disposal mm -hmm. the, all the yeah. in the in. Which pollutes the lake? It yeah. should be. Well, you can see here in Cairo, the the oh Nile yeah, the Nile, I, the Nile so in Cairo polluted. is very dirty, but mm. outside yes. of Cairo, it's very clean. Mm. Yeah, that's quite you know, interesting. People pollute it. Yeah. yeah. So if this is very simple, 
you should should be following this and also even the some places are facing the problem of water that missing water some place and if even that professor don't say says that to, to to save water to keep water don't don't waste water and also as his brothers remind us the removal uh, removal the, the the things on the path so all of that the if you look close to islamic uh, Sharia we and Hadith, we got good clues to to make our life better coming from our homes, and also to spread that in the. Uh, I think the, the the teachers they should talk about this this point, and you know the universities and the even this what we have in this now is big change is a good opportunity. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm getting from you brothers about the environment so far is that, uh, as Brother Hassan mentioned, uh, you know, it should be at a national level, saying that, you know, the country should have rules such as, you know, uh, if you litter, it's punishable by law. Uh, local level, where, you know, your local community gets together and uh, cleans up your Absolutely. local streets and uh, just the environment around your house. And what Brother Ali said about, uh, you know, it starts in the home, yeah. which is very important because even if there's laws that are there that you can't litter and your local community is uh, constantly cleaning uh, the trash that people are throwing Sounds outside, like unless, unless inside of you, you feel guilty when mm. you throw that wrapper on the floor, right? Unless that's, that's what you're down to, that you feel guilty, then, you know, the environment will never be Please can't see you everywhere, but yeah. Allah, Allah can. Allah does yeah. see you everywhere. And also I wanted to highlight the point that, you know, uh, uh, it is a problem of, of gratitude as well. We are ungrateful uh, to Allah. Allah gave us this world, as the Prophet, he said, that we are khalif and Allah, like, we are khulafa in this, in this yeah. ard. We are like successors on this earth. And Allah made this entire, not just earth, this entire universe for us. So, uh, we, we show Allah our ungratefulness when Bye. we make it Journey dirty and pollute right. it. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time, so I want to thank you guys for joining us thank here tonight for this wonderful conversation we had. And I want to thank you, dear viewers, for joining us here tonight for another program of Let's Talk. Uh, and until ne next time, may God bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.